far-right activist jailed in the UK is now getting a new trial. A court of appeal ordered Stephen Yaxley Lennon, better known as Tommy Robinson, should be retried on contempt of court charges. Now, he is out on bail while he awaits a new trial. Robinson is accused of filming suspects entering court, which is illegal in the UK. His first trial got worldwide attention from right-wing groups and several activists. Robinson was the co-founder and former leader of the English Defence League. The EDL has been responsible for violent anti-Muslim demonstrations across the UK. Now, Robinson is no longer with the EDL. He has denounced the group, saying they did no, he did no longer agree with their extreme positions, and he has now rebranded himself as a journalist and a campaigner against Islamic extremism. Well, one of the groups pressing for Robinson's release was the Middle East Forum, which is a conservative U.S. think tank. And my next guest is a fellow at the Middle East Forum. Rahim Kassam is also a spokesman for Free Tommy Robinson. Thank you for being with us, Rahim. Uh, as we mentioned, the, e the MEF has been actively supporting Robinson in a number of ways, uh, legally, politically. What is your reaction to him winning the appeal and being released on bail? Well, today is a great day for um, freedom of speech in the United Kingdom because uh, for those paying very close attention to this case, um, the, the, what went down in Leeds Crown Court on May the 25th was a total miscarriage of justice. And that's what we heard from the senior judges uh, in the appeal court today who recognized that Tommy was not given the chance to defend himself. He was not given the uh, uh, opportunity to enter a plea on the day and he was not even told what he was being held in contempt of court for. Uh, there are several different things that went down on that day uh, that was uh, ushered in by Judge uh, Jeffrey Marson uh, that have been found to be completely anathema to a, a free trial. Uh, let's not make any bones about this. This was a political imprisonment. He's been, uh, he's been treated as a political prisoner. And I literally uh, just got off the phone with him two minutes before coming on this show. Uh, and he detailed to me the treatment that he suffered in prison. Uh, 23 and a half hours in solitary confinement every day. He was being spat at through the cell uh, window. He was being uh, threatened through the, uh, through the little uh, uh, pain in the cell door. Uh, and the question is, how did this all come to pass, given that, as we now know, the original conviction uh, was not appropriate and not uh, carried through correctly in the first place? There are very serious questions to answer from Her Majesty's Prison Service all the way up to the Attorney General of the United Kingdom. All right, uh, we'll get to that, but I want to get a clearer picture on, on why you are supporting him. Uh, he was on the show last year. My impression from that interview is that he is fighting against uh, jihadist ideologies that are behind those terrorist attacks in the UK and that he's trying to counter the influence of Islamic extremism and Sharia law. But others have called him a racist, a hate mongerer. They say that he's uh, anti all Muslims and that he's inciting violence against all Muslims. You said you just spoke to him, you know him well. What does Tommy Robinson stand for and why do you support him? Well, I actually took the time to get to know him. I initially uh, used to believe what the, the establishment media told us about him, and I didn't want to touch him with the barge pole. And then I invited him in uh, to my office a few years ago to come and meet and sit down and chat. And I conducted an hour-long interview on YouTube with him uh, where people can see exactly who he is, what he stands for, and where he comes from. Here's the thing about Tommy. He's a working-class lad from Luton. He doesn't have any airs or graces about him. He hasn't done the whole political or media training thing. He's not a frequenter of Westminster bars and the House of Commons bars and so on and so forth. So yes, he's rough around the edges. But from what I heard from him and what I've got to understand about him over the last few years, here is a man who hates injustice of any kind. And I really mean any kind. He is an anti-racist, much more so than the left-wing campaigners that campaign against him. He is anti-female genital mutilation. He is anti-Sharia. Uh, he is anti-halal uh, uh, slaughter. You know, there are all sorts of injustices that we see in the United Kingdom. Yes, many of them tied to uh, Muslim communities, but actually not to the Muslim themselves, but rather to the extremist elements in their ranks and to Sharia law that Tommy campaigns on. And how can you blame him when you look at his town, Luton, how it's changed over the past couple of decades because of mass migration? You know, my parents were Muslim immigrants into the United Kingdom too. And I can tell you something, Tommy doesn't have a problem with them. He has a problem with people who are trying to, as, as, as some of my friends call it, impose Sharia supremacy, as we have seen 
in the United Kingdom. And, and for those who are sort of questioning it, shrugging their shoulders, scratching their heads and going, yeah, I don't believe that that could be happening in the United Kingdom today. Let me tell you something. It's happening in my neighborhood. It's happening all across London. It's happening all across the United Kingdom. And I'd be happy to show anybody with any doubts around these communities, uh, as I did with the New York Times magazine, who ended up agreeing with me about mm. this. So that's, that's where we're coming from. That's where Tommy's coming from. And I will say this, I, I love your news channel, um, but, but calling him far right in the introduction, I think, I think belies the truth. Okay, um, a valid point, uh, although that is how most people do see him uh, for his previous associations. But uh, as I said in my interview with him, that was not necessarily the impression that I got. It was more that he was uh, trying to uh, counter the Islamic jihadist ideology. But um, Raheem, does it detract from his message, however, when you have... Uh, far-right people supporting him, when you have uh, white nationalists championing his cause. Well, we've had several demonstrations into the tens of thousands of people out on the streets of Westminster and Whitehall in the past couple of months. As you say, the Middle East Forum very kindly uh, offered to help put those on. And I uh, was the master uh, of ceremonies at both of those uh, events. And I've got to tell you, out of crowds of 10 to 15,000 each time, yeah, you know what? There was 50 or 100 people who I prefer weren't there. Uh, people who are so disenfranchised by the political system that they go to extremes. But you just had a segment about... Uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn earlier in this yeah. hour. I mean, this is a leader of a party which has now been infiltrated en masse right to its upper echelons by overt anti-Semites. You know, we are we are a small group of people um, who believe in, in, in certain principles that, again, have, yes, uh, we acknowledge problems with some attendees, a handful of attendees. It's not right. quite the same thing. And so whenever I get the fingers pointed at me and pointed at us, I say, hold on a minute. The Her Majesty's loyal opposition is now an anti-Semitic party. Party, and you're pointing fingers at yeah. us for having a few a few bad eggs in our ranks. Well, look, we're trying to get rid of them, and we will get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, and we'll focus on what's really happening in the in the country at large. And uh, yeah, to to that, and I believe that's why he distanced himself from the uh, EDL. Uh, Raheem, those behind Robinson say that the bigger point is that if someone criticizes the jihadist ideologies then they're labeled an Islamophobe or a racist, that if they say, look, there's a problem with crimes linked to Islam and, and we need to talk about it, that you're automatically anti-Muslim and a xenophobe. Is that the bigger issue? Well, you know, when it comes down to sort of free speech and the in the hard conversations that we have to have about these things, I am afraid uh, that the political correct, multiculturalist, moral relativist lobby um, has had the rule of the roost for the past 10, 15 years in the United Kingdom. We are now starting to make up the ground. There was a poll in the Sunday Times that was conducted by YouGov uh, that came out just last week, which showed that 25% of people, that's one in four of everyone in the United Kingdom, would consider voting for an overtly anti anti-Islamist party. Uh, I think that's that's a great thing. Uh, I think we should all be anti-Islamist. Um, and as far as Islamophobia goes, well, you know, I was born into a Muslim family. I was a practicing Muslim for the first 20-odd uh, years of my life. And I got awarded the Islamophobe of the Year Award by an Iranian-funded think tank back in 2013. So you can see what a bunch of risible nonsense uh, that, that stuff is. Uh, there are major problems in Muslim communities in the United Kingdom. And let me tell you this, as somebody who visits these places often, the Muslim Muslims in those communities yeah. want our help to get rid of the bad eggs in their communities as much as we want to get rid of them. And we stand side by side with ordinary Muslims who don't want extremists in their ranks. Uh, Rahim, we're going to have to have you back uh, to get into that issue more in depth. Thank you so much, Rahim Akasim. Appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me.